Okay, I'm Richard Beal, police chief for the city of Dayton, and I'm here to provide an update on a very tragic fatal vehicle crash that occurred last night in downtown Dayton. That was a culmination of a series of events that led up to it, and I will give you an overview of those series of events. So to begin this series of events at 7:11 p.m. crews were flagged down by a male on North Kiri Street just north of Xenia Avenue. The male stated there was a male around the corner that was actively bleeding from his head. Officers arrived at 116 Xenia Avenue observed the victim Lloyd Walters sitting on the steps bleeding from wounds to his head, face, arms, and chest. Mr. Walters stated that his son Raymond Walters Jr had stabbed him, took off in his black 1999 Chevrolet truck. You will now listen to two, um, one's a radio dispatch call and some's radio traffic related to that initial event. The, the dispatch call is received less than a minute before the officers are flagged down, but we'll play that call first. 
146, Sam, we need some crews to go to 148 volts and see if the chart's there. Me for yes, sir. Go ahead. <clears throat> okay, at 7 13 p.m., the black Chevrolet truck drove off the roadway in front of 4542 Airway Road, striking a tree in the front yard. Suspect then exited the truck. Riverside Police Department was notified of the crash and responded to conduct an investigation. At 7.19 p.m., the Riverside officer exits police vehicle in an attempt to apprehend the suspect. Suspect was able to gain access to police vehicle before he could be apprehended. Riverside officer tased the suspect in an attempt to stop the theft of the cruiser. The taser was ineffective, and the suspect fled in the police cruiser traveling west on airway roads towards Smithville Road. This is the 911 call of the accident requesting oh, yes, police yes, response. Yes, somebody just wrecked in my front yard. Okay, did, what did they hit him? They, well, they hit a rock and hit my tree, and the car's just sitting out here running, and okay, somebody they, took off running out of it. Okay, are they injured? I don't know. All I hear, somebody out there is calling for help, but he's walking, so I don't know if he's injured or not. Okay, so you said he went into a tree? Yeah, he ran into a tree in my front yard. Okay, is there anybody else in the vehicle or just, just the one person? I didn't see anybody but him when I opened the door. He's okay. the only one that I've seen. And he's not injured, right? Well, he's walking around calling for help. I don't know if he is or not. But he hit hard. I mean, real hard. He up there in the back of the place? Uh, I don't know, sir. I didn't go outside. He's out there calling for help. Okay, what kind of vehicle is it? It's a truck. What color? It's a pickup truck. What color? Black. Okay, and is he a white male or black male? He's, he's white. What color shirt? He didn't have one on. Okay, alrighty, what's your last name? Okay, at 7.20 p.m., Dayton Police Crews were notified over the radio that a Riverside Police Department SVU cruiser was recently stolen from Airway Road and heading into Dayton at a high rate of speed with the overhead lights on. Suspect was described as a bald white male covered with tattoos, which is the same description of Raymond Walters Jr. The citywide signal 99 was then entered. At 7.22 p.m., the cruiser driven by the suspect, Raymond Walters Jr., was heading westbound on East 3rd Street and ran, to a, ran a red light at Patterson Boulevard. The cruiser collided with a red Acura SUV within the intersection. The Acura SUV was occupied by three adults. The police cruiser then struck a, a gray Honda Odyssey occupied by seven children and one adult as the vehicle was pulling away from the curb in front of the library. The impact caused the Honda Odyssey to roll across East 3rd Street and ultimately came to rest on a southwest curb. The stolen cruiser was estimated to be trailing at 97 miles an hour upon impact. The force of the impact also caused the police cruiser to split in several pieces. You'll now hear a uh, dispatch call. It was just a bad intersection in a police car. Stolen police car, Patterson and 3rd Street. Uh, Patterson Boulevard, Street. 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 It's, uh, there's a police officer here. There was a police cruiser that just went through the intersection and was hit by another another driver. Okay. Can you tell what city or agency this police car is? The other car or was hit by the other car? The other car hit the police car that was stolen. Okay. Was it like a Riverside officer's car that was involved? Uh, I don't know, there are police here, uh, Riverside, yes. Riverside Police. Okay. <laughs> Dayton police officers arrived on the scene and used counter force that was with, to actually take Mr. Walters into custody, so he's not compliant upon our approach to him. Total of 12 removals were made from the crash site by Dayton, Harrison Township, and Kettering Medics to Grandview, Miami Valley, and Dayton Children's Hospital. 
Dayton Police Department homicide detectives, special victims unit detectives, and crash reconstruction unit detectives responded to the scene to conduct the investigation. Now present you a timeline. Most of that has already been in my narrative, so I will not repeat it other than indicating that uh, medics entered the scene at 7.28 p.m., six minutes after the crash was reported to have occurred. And now you will see the dash cam of a Riverside cruiser that was responding to the scene. It was a police sergeant. Uh, of this initial incident where also a Riverside officer was already on scene. You will see the uh, Riverside vehicle, which is now under the control of the suspect, uh, driving backwards at a high rate of speed. Uh, you'll see a collision occurs, which disables the police sergeant's SUV, ending any potential to pursue that vehicle. Next slide is going to provide you a scene overview of these three related events. The first was at 116 Xenia Avenue. See that in the lower left hand corner of the map here. That's the location where the father was found stabbed. The next contact with Mr. Walters was up at 4542 Airway. That was the scene of the accident where he drove into the tree. And then the final location is 215 East 3rd Street, which was the location of the fatal crash site. <clears throat> we have a couple of uh, photos from the actual accident scene. So these are part of uh, the crime scene photos taken. You can see uh, the accident, the vehicle disabled here, back in the scene and in various pieces. So a bit of a distance photo, and another one here. Again, this is the gray Honda Odyssey that's back at the very, very distance there on the left-hand side of the street as you're looking at it. And this is the Riverside Cruiser, which was substantially damaged and uh, really fell apart in large pieces. And you see some of that debris from the vehicle and it's the, the, the remainder of it, which is intact, you can see in the left-hand screen. So a massive uh, devastating damage to that vehicle which gives a very clear evidence of the severity of the impact of this car traveling at 97 miles an hour. Suspect is a Raymond Andrew Walters substantial contact with the Dayton police. I won't read all these contacts with you. They're there on the screen uh, for your uh, information. I will tell you he was uh, is on active parole for a robbery and was released from prison in August of 2019. As of Tuesday morning, a total of two children lost their lives in the crash. The third remains in critical condition. The remaining eight individuals have either been treated, released, or in stable condition. Homicide detectives will be meeting with the Montgomery County Prosecutor's Office to present murder charges and other related offenses on Raymond Walters Jr. Uh, this is an incredibly tragic event for our city, particularly for the families impacted, and I ask you keep them in their thoughts and prayers. Was he being pursued at the time that he crashed? No. <clears throat> no. We have, we're checking all of our in-car cruisers 
Um, we have found no evidence. There was no indication at the scene that there was any pursuit. There's no evidence of any video reviewed that any of our officers were involved in any pursuit at all. Um, Riverside Sergeant's vehicle was incapacitated by the impact, and there's no evidence. I won't speak for the chief, but of the Riverside pursuing that vehicle after that crash. The chief was Frank see. Robinson, Chief uh, Riverside. Um, after Sergeant Safer's vehicle was struck um, on airway, there was no pursuit uh, from the Riverside Police Department of the suspect. How did you get into the, the, the officer's car? Like, how did that work? Okay, so when the uh, officer responded to the call, obviously we were going there as a, an accident. That's our first and foremost uh, uh, thing. We're, we're looking for a suspect or a, for a, a victim, actually, in, re in response to this suspect one, excuse me, victim walking down the street screaming for help. Officer responds when he gets there. Uh, the, the suspect is bloody. He's walking towards the vehicle on his right side on the passenger side. Uh, as he passes by the vehicle, the officer exits his vehicle and goes around the back side to, to see to check on him and see what you know, he can assist him. When he does that, the suspect double, doubles back and gains access to the passenger side of the vehicle. Was it, you think he did that intentionally trying to steal the car to get him back there? I can't speak for what his what his mindset was, but I would venture to guess that was would be the good reason to the right thing to do. The suspect have drugs, alcohol in his system. Yeah, we believe it's possible methamphetamine may be a contributing factor. We're seeking the, the necessary medical records to confirm that. Um, there is a, a history of drug abuse uh, in his history. Chiefs, we uh, we saw that the tasers were ineffective in the heat of the moment. Are there other avenues that the officer could use to stabilize the situation? I think that was the, the, the force that was necessary at the time for what we actually do. What was presenting itself was a, a victim, and now we're not sure exactly what he's thinking, and he jumps in the vehicle, then that's, we have a, a person now is not complying, but it doesn't reach another level other than to abuse a taser. What's the status of your officers that are involved in that situation? Are they on leave, still active? Um, that's, I'm not sure. I think, I think they're on leave, and, they're, and we're actually sitting about to have some evaluation with them, talk with some folks, and so it is. What was the taser uh, appropriately applied? In other words, did both leads hit the guy, or did maybe one hit the chair? Was it, the or something? Taser was deployed twice. Um, the first time it struck, he he went um, the five seconds. Um, he was uh, trying to comply somewhat, and uh, then the. It was deployed a second time when it, when we say ineffective, it actually hit him in one place, but it actually hit him in, a, in, a, in his genes that were not effective, so it did not hit him the second time, which enabled him to, to get next, you know, the vehicle. Why, why do you think, why do you suspect meth, and do you think he was high on meth, and would that have impacted the use of the taser? Yeah, I think that his behavior at the scene, prior drug history, and, and other information uh, leads us to believe methamphetamine may be a factor, maybe. Uh, we need to confirm that, but certainly a strong suspicion. Did the, did the cruiser, was it running at the time? Did they have to start it up? Yes, it was running at the time. Chief, the victims, the children, they were all in the same band, seven of them. Did they belong to a certain group? Were they members of the same family? Um, six were, I uh, believe, of the same family. One was a, was a relative of that family. And had they just been previously at the library? Yes, they had one of the children who wanted to drop off a book and uh, was there to do that. Chief, can you talk us through the protocol, uh, either one of you, uh, of getting to a scene, exiting the vehicle, or locking the vehicle, is that involved? Obviously it's running, I imagine an onboard computer might be an issue. Is there a protocol for training when you exit a vehicle like that? We currently have no policy in reference to locking our vehicles at accident scenes. So basically that was a, to us, that was an accident scene. So we, we, we when we arrived, we get out, we immediately, because it's such a rapid, you know, incident happening, you see this person walking past you, bloodied or whatever, and you want to go out and help them, you're not sure what's going on, then you have no idea that they're going to double back and you get into the vehicle. So th we have no policy in reference to that. So that vehicle to us was never un unattended because the officer was with it the whole time. Why did he stab his father? I don't know that we have uh, information about that, um, specifically Corey, so um, no it was multiple, multiple times. So. They were in the vehicle. I think his, um, there was maybe some question about him getting some mental health treatment or something. You know, I need to ask is if I, do we, do we can confirm that. He was, his father was talking about getting some treatment, I think. 
That's correct. The father was transporting him to the hospital for treatment evaluation for mental health issues. Um, and that's when apparently he learned where he was being taken and he stabbed his father multiple times. Chief, can you repeat that from the quick Yeah, so the this father was, it, had him in the vehicle with him. It was intending to take the hospital for some mental health treatment. When his son found out where he was heading, that's when he, uh, I think, threatened to kill his father, pulled out a, you know, a wet edged weapon, short bladed edged weapon, and began to assault him multiple times. And have you had any previous reports of son and father having physical confrontations possibly? Not that I'm aware of, but there's a pretty extensive history, and we did not have time to go through all those prior history, but I'm not aware of any. Any updates on the medical condition, Chief, of the father? Uh, don't know, tree didn't release, do we know, or not? Uh, he was stable. I don't know if he was released yet. Okay, or not. so yeah, we don't know if he's condition. released, but stable condition. What's the condition? What's his condition? Other uh, suspect. He is um, stable condition and um, currently in the hospital. If, you, if you're driving 100 miles an hour down East Third Street, was he just like? Uh, was my? Or was there any uh, indication he was trying to commit suicide? No, I don't. I don't think that's. Um, I don't think there's any evidence to to. Uh, support that. The top speed was 101 miles an hour, 97 miles an hour upon impact. When he backed into that police cruiser, did that render that cruiser inoperable? Yes, sir. If you have any idea, either you can answer this, how he was able to get paroled out of the prison? No idea. And was he supposed to be checking in with probation officers? Do you know what that situation was in terms of what his requirements were? Um, well, typically it's you know parole is supervised and there's requirements to check in on a regular basis with parole officers. His specific conditions, I, I'm not aware of. And have you even been able to start tracking that down in terms of knowing being in that contact? I believe we are. We have, if we have not, we intend to make contact with adult parole authority. I know we had a conversation earlier today, so. Hopefully we've made that contact, and if not, we will do shortly. So. Do you think He's only been released for a couple of weeks in prison. Yeah. Do you, do you think he was deliberately trying to cause a crash? I think it's hard to say. I mean, it's we just don't know enough, I think, right now. Um, you know, the question, we don't really know the causative factor of the first crash. I don't think that's clear, necessarily. So um, at the rate of speed he was traveling, the inevitability of a crash is almost guaranteed. And so whether he intended to, his actions were certainly highly likely to lead to. I mean, it was, you really would have to be um, naive to think that that kind of driving was not going to have a catastrophic impact. Was he being pursued yet by no. either Dayton or Riverside when he got to the library? He was just no. running. Just running. And when he hit that police cruiser and disintegrated, where was that officer? No, he no, was he in. Park he's park. driving it. There's, there's no officer in it. That's the. He, he, he stole the vehicle. Oh. Okay. So he's the driver of a stolen police vehicle at that time. There's no officer on scene. Did the did the van that the children were in? Did it actually roll or did it? Could it? No, not that I'm aware of. Okay. But did his vehicle hit it or the other vehicle? Like he's jammed. Well, he hit the the Acura first, and then there was a secondary collision involving uh, the uh, Honda Odyssey. So the cruiser hit the Odyssey, though, or it hit the other? Um, yes. Yes. Well, I, I, think it, I, think, I think it glanced off the first vehicle, did it yes. not? And then, and then crashed into the Odyssey, and then... Which direction was the Odyssey headed when it got his truck? The Odyssey was parked along the north curve, facing westbound in front of the yeah, library. It was trying to pull from the curve, but it stopped when he, was, when he hit it. Yeah. Yeah. With the understanding that this took place, started, I guess, in the city of Dayton, ended up at Riverside, ended up back in the city of Dayton, of the charges, the most serious, of course, would be vehicular homicide. We're well, we're looking for murder charges. And, and the murder, murder comes in because of a fel of felony Correct. For stealing the vehicle. Well, aggravated assault or felonious assault right. of his father. Right. You know, aggravated auto robbery, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, has, has he been officially charged in Chief Hill? Not that I'm aware of. Is it a total of twelve people were hospitalized? Does that include the father and the suspect as well, or was that just other? This were this was from the scene of the crash, okay. so included the suspect, not the father, because he was not at that scene.
And about how many vehicles were in total hit? We saw quite a few. It was just the three. Any indication more than three? Sorry. The, the, the stolen cruiser and two, two uh, pedestrian or two uh, civilian vehicles. That's there were, the there were two other vehicles that were parked right. in front of the Hala Odyssey, but also sustained minor damage. All right, so two additional with some minor damage. Yeah, there was a vehicle on Riverside as well that got struck. If you see the video, he's backing up. Yeah. He has yeah. a vehicle there first. Right. And also, just to try and explain it, we saw the other video that uh, I guess a passerby took. There was an officer before he took stole the police vehicle. There was an officer standing outside of the Riverside vehicle. Yeah. That was that officer's vehicle. Yes. So he was in the passenger seat. How did he get into the driver's seat so quickly? He, he I, I'm, I'm just saying he was, he was. Um, motivated to get into that the driver's seat as quick as possible. So when he opened the door, he just immediately went across. Officer, he locked the doors, uh, locking the do officer out. The officer used his key to gain entry on the passenger side because he's down the other side of where the traffic is going through. So he's only out of, out of staying out of traffic. So he's, that's when he makes contact with him and he doesn't comply with him. Did he threaten the officer at any time? And did he have the weapon on him when he was confronted by the officer or was the officer trying to help? Uh, that I'm not sure. If he, if he threatened him or I'm, obviously what what he was actually saying to him in there. Did you guys recover the knife from the stand? Yes, it was recovered inside the truck at the uh, 45, uh, 42 yeah, weight address. Yeah, the, the edge weapon was recovered uh, in the vehicle. Truck, the, the father's truck. Could, is, sorry to keep going back to this, but is meth yeah. like kind of, is, could that have played a big role in terms of like culpability? Or is, I mean, is it just all his actions are just getting really high on meth and methamphetamine? Could yeah, give you aggressive I, tendencies and delusions. people are responsible for their actions, and uh, uh, methamphetamine might, if we we have evidence that that was in fact in his system and of a level that influenced his behavior, uh, might have been a contributing factor to uh, volatile behavior. It's not an excuse for the behavior. Chief, as, as Chief at Riverside, is there anything personally you would like to acknowledge to the families involved? Obviously, the city, the city itself, and the city, the, you know, the Riverside Police Department, want to you know offer condolences to the family and the victims of this, this tragic event that we wish never happened. But just to reiterate, there were seven children in the Odyssey plus an adult. Yes. And why were any shots fired at the cruiser that was being stolen? I think the chief already answered that earlier. From the teaser? Yeah, it was, it was basically, I won't speak for chief, but he, he basically explained, you got an auto accident. That's all the information they have. The information was not out available yet to them that this was a, a felonious assault in the city of Dayton. So all they're responding to is an auto accident. At, at any point in time, was any department notified of, obviously there was a stabbing, but they had no idea who the person that did the stabbing was as of yet, correct? Who are you well, speaking you, you to? Uh, we did. Yes, okay. We did, and that was put out in a broadcast by a Dayton police officer. And, and she put that information, there was no acknowledgement of the fact that this guy may have just gotten out of prison? No. Right? No, not at that time. All right, thank you guys. Appreciate it.